Hello, and welcome to the Pets Weekly Podcast. My name is Lindy, and I will be your host every week as we cover all things pets. This episode is part of the podcast's Cats and Coffee segment, where we deep dive into cat-related topics while drinking coffee, of course, and today we are talking about tabbies. And I learned quite a bit while researching this episode, so I'm excited to share it with you. So let's just dive in. Did you know a tabby cat is not an actual breed of cat? A tabby is not a true recognized breed, but rather a class, if you will, of some of the most distinguished and friendly cats around. The classification of the tabby cat came about due to the various markings and the unique shading of their coats. A tabby cat is not limited to one breed or even five breeds for that matter. You can find these variations of color across numerous mixed and purebred cats. It is common to see an M shape across their forehead, which has some interesting history behind it that we will get to shortly. The most occurring tabby coat is actually black, which is weird if you think about it. We don't see all black tabby cats because that is not what makes them a tabby. It's the more visible top coat layer of fur that tells us if a cat is a tabby cat. The most common top layer color variations are gray, orange, and brown. And you can even find some white thrown in there on top of all the fun colors if you happen upon an extra fancy feline tabby. When you see an orange tabby, you are typically looking at a male, while only 20% are females. Some other color variations that are not as common are red, chocolate, sable, blue, fawn, and cream. The most common coat patterns are mackerel, classic, patched, striped, spotted, blotched, and ticked. There are some tabby coats that appear to shimmer in the sunlight or change as the cat moves in certain lighting, which is a really neat characteristic. This is because the cat has a different base coat than the top coat that sits on the tip of the cat's hair farthest from the root. The African and European wildcats have tabby markings, and that takes the introduction of these markings back as far as 131,000 years ago. The English word tabby came from a region in Baghdad called Atabi, where merchants sold silk. At this time, striped silk had patterns that were similar to the coats of the tabby cat. The word we know as tabby was referred to by the 14th century Middle French as atabis, which then changed to tabus. Now going back to the M shape that can be commonly found on a tabby cat's forehead, the story behind this fascinating M has changed throughout the years, and religion and beliefs have a lot to do with this. Science says that it's all in the genes, even though they can't explain why it really is a perfect uppercase M 100% of the time on every tabby cat, and there's no real definitive explanation for why this is. Of course, it could all be in the genes, but who really knows? There are so many things about cats and animals in general that we simply don't understand and maybe we aren't meant to. For all we know, the M stands for mystery, but here are a few of the stories that take us way back and attempt to explain the magical M that can still be found on our modern-day feline friends, along with some other interesting findings on the history of the tabby cat. Our first story brings us to the faith of Islam, and to a particular individual of importance, Prophet Muhammad, and his cat Mueza. In this legend, Muhammad, also known as the founder of Islam, had a tabby cat named Mueza that he adopted while out campaigning and in the midst of a battle. Mueza was an Abyssinian cat, which is a breed of cat, 
and she was white and black, and at the time she was nursing kittens. It was Saturday, March 23rd, 625 AD, and the Battle of Uhud was underway in the valley north of Mount Uhud in Saudi Arabia. To keep the cats safe, Muhammad altered the course of his soldiers for his new cat friend, which is really fascinating to me. Rarely do you hear of great leaders that find an animal in need and they change their entire course and path for this animal. The story goes that Muhammad woke one morning for prayer and found that Muezo was lying on his robe. He needed his robe, of course, to prepare for his morning, so out of respect and love for her, he cut the sleeve of the robe so that he did not disturb her and put his robe on and then headed to prayer. It is also said that the Prophet would share the same water as Muezza, some resources, even say he drank the same water she drank and bathed in the water, showing that they were equals, and that his precious cat was just as important, if not more, than he was. Mohammed did so much for Mueza and every cat he came across. However, there was one special day when Mueza returned the favor by saving Mohammed's life. Mueza killed a snake that was trying to make its way into the Prophet's robe, and the Prophet deeply appreciated his friend's protection, and to show this appreciation, he granted cats to have many lives by stroking their head, and gifted cats the ability to land on their feet after jumping or falling. There is even an hadith which is a collection of traditions and speakings from the great prophet that details a woman who was punished to the depths of hell after leaving her cat locked in the house where it later passed away. Mohammed believed in his people having cats as pets as long as the cat was fully cared for and loved the way that he or she deserved. I think it goes without saying that this man is my kind of person. I think anyone listening or watching can relate to the Prophet's views of cats and how special they are and how much they can enrich our lives. Also, I am totally down with pushing people into the depths of a torturous hell for bending their animals. Sounds pretty fitting to me. Our next tabby cat story, and one of the most well-known in the Christian faith, is about Jesus and his mother Mary. It was very cold one night, and Mary was trying to keep baby Jesus warm, but she wasn't having any success. She tried to get the animals in the barn to move closer to him to provide warmth, but it was still not enough. He cried and cried, shivering and uncomfortable. Mary held him close to her, but this did not give him enough warmth, and she didn't have a blanket to give him either. There was a mama cat in the barn with her newborn kittens. The legend goes that the cat was watching a very upset Mary try to comfort and warm her son. After watching Mary, the cat jumped up next to Jesus and laid next to him, touching him and cuddling him. Her fur and body heat warmed him and brought him comfort. A calm was felt throughout the barn now that Jesus was no longer crying and cold. Mary watched as the cat began purring and Jesus quickly fell asleep. Listening to the cat's lullaby of purrs and snuggling close to her, Mary reached over and touched the cat's forehead, petting her with a warmed heart for what this precious creature had done for her son. An M formed across the cat's forehead, forever cementing this beautiful moment between a friendly barn cat, Jesus, and Mary. The mark is meant to signal to everyone who sees it that these cats are kind and bring comfort to those in need. Anyone who has been lucky enough to be loved by a cat knows how comforting they can be. I can certainly see this story being true. And it's just another example of how cats touch our lives. Our last story takes us to Egypt, 
a place where the people are known for their compassionate and strong relationship with cats from the beginning of civilization. The Egyptian word for cat is mau, spelled M-A-U, which means light or sun. The name may be related to a cat's eyes and how they shine like the sun. Some text even refers to the cat's eyes at night in reference to the light of the moon, and I can certainly see how both are fitting. A little side note, the word mao is close to the sound that a cat makes when talking to a human, or the sound that they make whenever they're talking to their mothers when they are very young. Now, whether the name relates to the sound a cat makes or the way their eyes glow at night, The ancient Egyptians connected cats to the moon and light and believed they deserved respect and love. And I think we can learn a lot from the Egyptians and how they loved their kitty companions. I will be making a video in the future on the Egyptians and their fascinating relationship with cats. The ancient Egyptians marked their cats, aka Mao, with the M on their foreheads to illustrate their rank in society, which was very high, as well as their mystical connection with the bright moon, aka the light in the sky above. Another interesting bit of information I found while researching is that the first tamed cats were in fact tabbies. It is believed that these cats were the cats of farmers from the Mediterranean. Before the cats started showing up, they had a really difficult time controlling their rodent population. Needless to say, the people were very pleased to have friendly and social cats that looked for affection and companionship, but also controlled the rodent issue that plagued the area. After this discovery, the tabby cat was domesticated and could be found throughout all of Europe. Shortly after, the tabby cat was found in several other countries due to Europe transporting the cats on ships to these other countries. Though temperament varies greatly across tabbies, National Geographic reports that personality may be somewhat linked to coat color. They also suggest that orange tabbies, in particular, tend to be more talkative than other cats. Tabbies have been reported as having one of the biggest personalities, and they love attention. Some are just downright needy and demanding of attention. This was found through research that National Geographic conducted on cats with tabby-like coats compared to cats that did not have tabby coats. We have talked a lot in this episode about the friendly nature of the tabby cat, but contrary to the loving and social nature of tabbies, Garfield the cat, the cranky orange tabby, came onto the scene in 1976 by the name of John, which was then changed to Garfield in 1978. Garfield is a bit more cynical about life and not as social as the average tabby. He just wants to lay around and eat lasagna, which is fine, no judgment, but he tends to be a little bit cranky and he may not be the best mascot for the true tabby cat's shining personality. Now Mayor Stubbs, he is a cat that represents this class of felines well. He was the mayor of Talchitna, Alaska for two decades. He was voted in in 1997, and then after his passing in 2017, a new kitty by the name of Denali stepped in as the new mayor. Mayor Stubbs was a social butterfly, true to the tabby cat's nature. He was famous, and people from all over would travel to the area to meet him and take pictures with him. They sold apparel in the nearby stores with Mayor Stubbs front and center. The locals say he was friendly, warm, inviting, and a joy to be around. Resident Sharon Bender told AlaskaNewsSource.com, quote, Well, you know, this is actually partially the reason I moved here. I used to live in Ketchikan, Alaska, and then my husband said, well, how about Telchitna? 
I'm like, huh? What? What's in Telchitna? He's like, well, they have a cap for a mayor. And I'm like, really? That sounds like my kind of place. End quote. If you can't get enough of tabbies like the folks in Alaska, you can head to Atlanta, Georgia and go to the Happy Tabby Cat Cafe, which is where the original cafe was created. The cafe is true to its name and is all tabby themed and there are now 25 identical cafes across the US. In the cafe, there are various rustic features along the walls and on the ceilings that allow the resident cats to roam, investigate their surroundings, and meet the cat-loving customers. You can find cute little cat beds and scratching posts along the walls as well. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I enjoyed learning about the tabby cat and discovering new facts and history that I never knew about. If you are a viewer who enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe on YouTube, and if you're a listener, please consider following the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts for new episodes every week where I bring you all things pets. You can find the YouTube link for this episode in the description of this episode, along with all of the references I used throughout my research. Please follow the podcast on Instagram for episode announcements and general podcast updates, and you can find our account at Pets Weekly Podcast. Also, the podcast is brought to you by Sunshine's Pet Services, where I offer in-home pet services in Florida and virtual dog behavior consultations to every pet parent in the U.S., for more information about my services, please visit sunshinespetservices.com. Until we meet again, I challenge you to wake up in the morning and ask yourself how you can make your pet's life better every day. Thank you for joining me and I will see you soon.